Hello everyone and welcome back to a fantastic new video. Today I'm going to be showing you this wonderful new 2D to 3D AI video and image converter called Owl 3D. Now when I was first approached on LinkedIn a few days ago, I was a little apprehensive. The person that had made the program showed me some examples and while they were very impressive, it's one thing to see curated examples and another thing to see it for yourself. And after downloading the demo and spending a few days messing around with it, I have to say, I am quite impressed about what it can do. Some of the images are so good, they look like they could have been natively shot in 3D. And then of course, there are a few others that are a little bit of a mess, but that is okay. Because today I'm gonna to be taking you on the ins and outs, the things that I like about it, the things that I don't like, maybe some things that could be improved with it. And we're also gonna be comparing converted 2D images to their native 3D counterparts. It'll be a good way to see how well this does stack up. So without further ado, we're gonna be taking a look at this thing. I'm very excited. I have not been this excited about anything in quite some time. Let's get started. The process in which you convert a 2D image or video to a 3D one is quite simple. You simply input the image by clicking here and selecting from the file window, or you can click and drag from an already open window. Upon getting an image loaded up, you are presented with a few more options. For this demonstration, we will be using a screenshot from the recent 3D review for Seoul. At the top, you can choose to add more images or videos. You can select what 3D format you want to output, with multiple options outputting multiple images for each format. For today's video, I will be using Half Side by Side and Anaglyph 3D. Once your format is selected, you can choose where your images are outputted to. Below that is the resolution selection. The demo only outputs to 720p, but you can pay to upgrade to 8K. Finally, you can choose the strength of the volume and pop-out. We will look at that more momentarily. For now, we will choose the moderate preset as a base. Next, you start the render. After a few seconds, the image will be complete. You can go to the folder if it's already open on your PC, or you can click on the image to open the folder with the file selected. After that, it's only a matter of viewing it. As you can see, the program does a good job at converting this image. In fact, if you stood back, you might think it was natively shot in 3D. Of course, you can see a few errors. The water bottle on the table looks as though it is a texture on the table and the computer monitor. You can also see the program trying to fill in the background around Ashley's head and shoulders. With this image in mind, let's explore what lowest strength versus highest strength looks like. With the base moderate strength of the 3D output in mind, here's what the image looks like on the lowest setting. Here is the highest setting. While the strength of the 3D has dramatically increased, so have the 3D errors. Ashley's head is deformed, as is mine. For the purposes of this video, we will be settling on the moderate 3D setting. Let's now look at how the program handles the pop-out slider. The base image has the pop-out set to zero, as per the moderate setting. Here is the same image in strength of 3D with max pop-out. We get a little more negative parallax. One thing I would like to see with this program is the ability to alter the convergence point, or where the image begins to pop out of the screen. As it stands, every image will have pop-out in it with no way to control what comes out of the screen. Next, let's compare a natively shot image to a converted counterpart. We will be using a screenshot from the live action segment of this video. Here is the native 3D image. Now compare it to the converted image. As you can see, it's a pretty close race, but there are differences. For example, the microphone hanging above my monitor on the left should look like it's coming out over my monitor, not behind it. My arms are also more compressed here, with my fingers being pressed onto the background like a texture. It is especially noticeable on my hand in front of the TV. I also come out of the screen in the converted image, whereas in the native one I am behind. This is something I was able to alter in my editing program. Once again, being able to control the convergence point would be a welcomed option. Let's now look at two conversions that are pretty much perfect. The first is the scene I rendered in 3ds Max. Since the image contains simple geometry, it is able to pull off a flawless conversion. The second is a screenshot from Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. The fizzy lifting drink's room ceiling extends far into the distance, while the program handles all the bubbles floating around pretty well. The possibilities for conversion are wide open. I set to work converting images from some of my favorite movies, like this moment from the climax of Treasure Planet as the pirate ship flees from the exploding treasure hoard. It looks like how I always imagined it might, with the ship flying out of the screen towards the audience and away from danger. 
The program does struggle with smaller things like Jim on his rocket board and the rigging on the ship, but on the whole, this looks amazing. I also tested some traditional 2D artwork, something where the 3D can only be achieved through conversion. This art was done by my girlfriend Ashley. The program easily converts all of the girls, giving them a nice amount of volume and depth. This other art of a lineup of characters also looks phenomenal in 3D. For this type of work, high resolution and high detailed imagery, Owl 3D does flawlessly. Take this image for example from Open Roller Coaster Tycoon 2. Owl 3D even understands the geometry behind pre-rendered 3D sprites and gives this theme park a hyper stereo look. Or this image from a webcomic called Spirit Guild. Finally, I want to take a look at an image I converted from Bittersweet Candy Bowl. I am limited to what I can do as depth mapping is not something I am versed in. Instead, I simply cut out the shapes and layer them on the z-axis. Here is the original converted edit I made. Here's what Owl 3D did. It does a pretty good job at layering the images I originally had done, adding subtle volume to the characters' bodies. Something cool that Owl 3D can do is render you out the depth map too. This depth map is from the screenshot for the 3D reviews for Soul. The possibilities are endless, and I believe that AI conversions like this will go a long way in helping more 3D media get creative. There will still need to be a human touch on the creative side and to clean up some of the minor oddities the conversion creates, but it certainly does a lot of the workload. This, coupled with many tech companies talking about making glassesless 3D displays, will usher in a whole new wave of 3D storytelling and media. I look forward to seeing where Owl 3D goes in the future, and will be following its development closely. So, what did you guys think about Owl 3D? I am still being blown away by it, and I'm constantly coming up with new things that I want to see converted into 3D. If you guys enjoyed this video, go ahead and check out the program and join the Discord. The link to the website will be in the description below. I will see you guys next time.